all of my guitar necks are laminated. I do that not just for strength, but I do it for its aesthetic value. And I want to increase the stiffness of the neck. As the neck is stiffer, it will keep that kinetic energy back into the top rather than wicking it off through the neck. So in order to get to this, I first have to make this and this and this. And so I've selected this billet of walnut, which is barely long enough to get the neck blank out of. And we're going to accent that with some hard maple. Now, the laminates that I use are important, not just in specie, but in dimension. The neck is going to be for this guitar. And as you can see, this is a walnut back, of course. These uh, inlay strips are quite narrow. And that center is a walnut center with a maple on each side of that. So I want these laminates to reflect that same thing so that when you look at the back and up the neck, it just draws your eye right up through all the way to the top of the headpiece. So I'm going to show you some of the steps as to how I get from these to this finished neck. First thing I'm going to do is rip some strips off these of a predetermined thickness here. And then we're going to refine those strips and eventually glue those up. So I've cut these walnut strips and I've kept them in order. These, I don't know if you can see it, but these are book matched and I want to keep those just that way. But these maple strips have got to be much thinner. So rather than do that on the table saw where I waste an eighth of an inch every time I make a cut, I'm going to resaw those out here. Now I have my strips all ripped out but they're still rough because they've just come off the bandsaw. And we've got a lot of them here. I think we're, I've ended up with uh, nine strips to laminate this neck up. So in order to get these smooth enough to glue up, we're gonna take them over to the drum sander. sanded to their respective thicknesses. These we want at a quarter of an inch, these thinner walnut pieces at a sixteenth, and then the maple is at a thirty-second. So we're going to have a walnut center and maple on each side of that and another strip of walnut on each side of that surrounded once more by maple and that a little sandwich together like that. So now I'm ready to glue the neck blank together and to make sure that these uh, pieces all remain perfectly straight, no bowing or anything like that in them, I've come up with this system um, to glue those together and I use these uh, double bar clamps here, pipe clamps and I got these pieces of steel from Universal Instruments years ago and I put these in here they make a really nice clamping system that will keep those edges just perfectly parallel but now I have to cut an angle on both of these pieces to form that headpiece. And I'm going to do that with this jig made to travel in the bandstand. Well, I've got these bevels cut on the bandsaw, but that's way too rough. You can't make a glue joint out of that. It's just not smooth enough. So these have to be smooth and they have to be maintained at a 15 degree angle. That's the correct angle of the headpiece. I used to have fancy router jigs to do this with and I found over the years that it's probably just not worthwhile. So we're going to do this by a little bit different means. So 
So with these angles nicely refined, um, we've got smooth surfaces to glue to here. I'm gonna glue the headpiece over that bevel on the neck because that glue surface combined with the fingerboard being glued over that is gonna make that a good strong joint. But I have to have a way to hold all of that together. I can't just clamp it because they'll split apart. So I developed this. I'm sure others have similar jigs. And this is really quite simple. This thing just allows me to position these two pieces and get them lined up so that when I clamp these, they can't spread apart. Now I have a neck blank glued up. You've got the proper headpiece angle and so on. But now, before I can do anything else, I have to get a truss rod slot in it. And you can see here that I've made marks representing where the nut position will be and where the truss rod will end. And down here, this is the 14th fret position and some other joinery marks that I need. So now, here at the spindle shaper, I'm going to cut a groove for that truss rod and that has to be perfectly centered so I've taken the time to make a scrap stick exactly the same width as the neck itself make a test piece and we measure that with um, calipers until we get that truss rod slot centered dead on but now we need a heel block so I've glued up this stack of walnut which is going to get glued on here and we want to keep that reasonably squared up on there and centered and in the right place. So I have this device. I don't know if this is an exclusive to Ladue guitars or not, but this thing works pretty well. So it's just a matter of putting all this together in here with some glue on it and pressing it down. We've had this in the press for about two hours. It's ready to come out. So we we'll slip that out of there. And we have a completed neck blank. There's obviously a lot more to go. Uh, a fingerboard has to be made. The heel has to be swept. There's mortise and tenon joinery that's gotta be done on the end of this. It has to be cut at the correct angle so that it sits in the correct orientation on the body. So there's still a long ways to go. And really, at a neck clank, you're only, with respect to a finished neck, you're probably only about 25% of the way there. Thanks for watching. Uh, background noise has been provided by the machinery. Background music has been provided by James Taylor, the Wayland Jennies, uh, Doc Watson, John Gorka, uh, Pierce Pettis, and many, many others. Thanks for watching.